you've gotten a bunch of wildflower seeds for class and now you don't know what to do next. In this video, I'm going to show you first how to get those wildflower seeds ready for spring and second, I'm going to show you why it's important. My name is Brian. I am the co-owner of One Less Thing and I'm a former ag teacher, but first I was a forester. First off, let's talk about scarification versus stratification. Uh, seeds sometimes need one or the other. Occasionally they need both, but we'll start with scarification. Scarification is the physical or chemical uh, scratching or wearing away of the seed coat uh, by animals, essentially. When it's in nature, these seeds are going to be consumed by birds or mammals. Uh, if they're consumed by mammals, they have digestive juices, those chemicals we're, are going to wear down the seed coat, move through the digestive system. Some of them will not be digested. They will be at some point deposited uh, to germinate the next spring. So those have been chemically scarified. Uh, others are going to be physically scarified, usually from birds. Uh, they will consume the seeds. The birds have the crop and in that crop they have rocks and they have sand and that grit is going to try and wear down that seed for them to digest. Not all those seeds will be digested. They will pass through their system uh, to land on the ground and be, and be able to germinate the following spring. So that's how in nature scarification occurs. Since we have these seeds, they'll have to be scarified uh, by us. Uh, for the seeds we have here, they have to be stratified. Uh, in most cases, it's going to be cold stratification. Very rarely will that be heat stratified. But for cold stratification, it, it means cold. It means winter temperatures down near freezing. Refrigerators work great for that. That's why we have this container with our seed bags because that's going to go in the refrigerator to simulate being out in the cold for winter. I do get the questions, what about seeds? I don't either know if they need to be stratified or I don't know how long they need to be stratified. Can I do it anyway? Go ahead and stratify them. I actually, these, uh, the mountain mints that I have here don't need to be stratified. They have to be cast on warm ground to be able to germinate, but they don't have to be stratified. If for your class, you need to be able to continue the stratification for everybody in your class to do it, give them the seeds that don't say they need to be stratified and have them stratify the same length of time. Because in nature, these seeds are going to fall on the ground just like every other species. Uh, the difference is they're going to germinate just like that without any need of stratification, but they're not going to be hurt. Uh, by going through the stratification process. So I'm here to tell you the best way that I have found to do this and have a lot of success. Uh, the biggest issue I had with the seed bombs is that they are not the bomb, they are duds. I've seen those things sit out in my, in my grass, in my yard for six to nine months, zero success. I had zero germination from seed bombs. As far as the paper towels, uh, you Put a paper towel, down, paper towel down, you soak it with water, you lay the seeds on it, you cover it with a paper towel, put it in a Ziploc bag, set it and forget it. Mold, that's the only word I can use to describe what I had. I had minor success. I had over 100 seeds, I think a couple of them germinated, uh, but I was very good at growing mold. So those two methods I pushed to the side. This, this method here is when I decided to actually go to the experts that work with wildflower seeds all the time and get them ready for their spring casting season. This method is simple. It's something you can easily do with your class. What it requires is first, Ziploc bags. Don't cheap out and get the, the dollar store standard sandwich bags. These are, these are freezer bags that have a zipper top. And the reason why that's important, these will last you multiple years. You can stratify coneflowers for multiple years using this same bag. It's not going to wear out. Uh, next, you need to have bags of sand and then some containers to scoop the sand. That work, you can use whatever you want to for that. Uh, you will need your seed packets, uh, a, a spray bottle with water and a permanent marker. A plastic container to hold your bags of sand containing your seeds. Why this is important is it's what's gonna go in the refrigerator. So you wanna be able to hold these up so that you don't dump sand all over your refrigerator when you have this all set up and ready to go. For this method, the first step is to get organized. I have my seed packets and I have my Ziploc bags. So the first step I do is just simply putting, this is cone flour, I have it in a Ziploc bag. The next step is I take my permanent marker and I write cone flour on that bag. It doesn't matter if you have 10 seed packets of cone flowers, each one is gonna get a bag. And those bags are gonna be distributed either to an individual student or to a lab group uh, that they're going to, to take care of. So make sure 
that you have enough bags to, to match your seed packets. The way you do that, put it in there, write the name on it, hand them out. And that's the first step in the process. The next step is that you have to take your Ziploc bag and you fold the top down. Cuff it like you would your, your shirt sleeves or your pants legs. Uh, and that's gonna help hold the bag open. I have the benefit of a, of a freezer bag whose the bottom actually expands so it can stand up on its own, but this cuffing will help that just the same. After you've completed that, you then have to add the sand. One thing I'll say is I've, I've never bought a bag of sand from a local hardware store that wasn't already wet because they just keep them out in the rain. If your sand is dry, that's fine. If your sand is, is damp or wet, that's fine too, as long as it's not soaking water dripping out. That much water needs to, to drain off a little bit, but if it's just damp or wet, it's fine. Fill your bag with sand. The key here is uh, don't let the students fill it up past the label. Label is about halfway, a third of the way halfway. Why? Because if you fill it up over halfway, three quarters, and you put these in here, and you slam them together to get them nice and tight, uh, that sand's going to pop out the top. So keep the sand a third to half the way. I use the label as the line for that. You put the sand in there. The next step is you, you open up your seed pack. You open up the lid back here, and you pinch it like this. The importance of pinching it like this is because you make a, a nice little spout for the seeds to come out. This is very important when you have your bag and your sand in there, you wanna aim right for the middle, pour them in there, and then tap on the opposite side to make sure all those seeds come out. You can even reverse your hands and tap on the back. You want all the seeds you can in the bag to get stratified. Once you've got all the seeds in your container, uh, what, what you do next is you have to mix those seeds with the sand. You can easily stick your finger in there and move those seeds around. I will tell you, like with these uh, cardinal flower seeds, these seeds are so tiny. I mean, they are, they are nearly microscopic. They are so small. This was the only one I've ever gotten like this. I opened up the seed packet and inside the seed packet was a smaller wax seed packet. And the reason why they did that is the seeds were so small, they were going to come out the, the breaks the, the, where this thing was sealed shut. So it, when I poured those in there, I realized I could not mix it with my finger because they would all stick to my finger. Instead, the alternate way to do this is you, you hold the opposing seams and you shake it like this. And when you do that, the sea sand from the edges folds over on top of it and it mixes that soil. It allows you to do that so the, the seeds don't stick to your finger. This passion flower, uh, the seeds are a lot bigger so you can stir it with your fingers and you'd be able to tell if your seed, the seeds had gotten on your finger or not. When you're mixing your sand, what I would say not to do is have your students shake it up in the middle, just straight up and down, because what will happen is the sand will throw out the top. This is also important why you don't overfill the bag because that will contribute to sand coming out the top. We wanna keep the sand that we have in there because the seeds are gonna be stuck to it. The next step is, is to get your spray bottle. Uh, we want it on a, on a mist setting. We don't wanna find mist, but we don't wanna, this, this isn't a squirt gun. So you wanna be able to spray it as you can see, the spray goes out and it's touching both sides of the bag. So you know it's covering all the sand. Um, if, you, if you can look at the sides and see, oh, that's not going very far. Shake it up some more and spray it again. This may take several tries. My sand, as I said, came from the hardware store wet, so I don't need that much. Uh, once you get that all taken care of, make sure your edges are still nice and cuffed so this bag can can get some ventilation, can get some air when it's uh, in your refrigerator and it goes in your container. And then all the, con all the other bags will go in the container as well. Once you've got your, your Ziploc bag of, of seasoned sand in your container, uh, hold on to your seed packet. Why that's so important is there's a lot of information on there besides just whether it needs to be stratified or not. If you look at this, uh, the code here indicates that this requires 60 days of stratification. And you'll see in, in my very poor handwriting that I've got 60 on here and then the dates, December 10th to February 10th. And yes, I know that's not technically 60 days, it's 62 days, uh, but a little more is better. It's not gonna know the difference if it's out in the, in the, in the pasture anyway. So it's for, in terms of my record keeping, it's easier to say December 10th, to February 10th. You can even call it Valentine's Day if it's easier for you to remember. 
if you look at the seed packet, one, one of the things that it will say is that it needs to be sown into cold soil or, or warm soil. So you need to keep these seed packets to know when to sow these seeds onto your ground. Uh, it's easy enough just to put them in an envelope, find, find some place. If you're that worried about losing it, you're only spraying into these bags, just put it in a container right next to it and put it in the, in the refrigerator. Or you can keep it out of the tank container and just put it in the back of the refrigerator. You can even get a separate Ziploc bag and zip them up so you know they won't get wet and put them in there because I was an ag teacher, things just go missing. So a lot of times it's just easier to keep it right with where you need it to. So pick whichever method works best for you to not lose these seed containers. So you got all your seed bags in your container or containers, what do you do next? Well, the whole point of the, of the spray is to keep the soil mo moist. And when the soil is moist, it's gonna keep the, the, the seeds moist as well to help with that stratification. You're going to need to spray these once a week. All it requires is to bring it out to get these bags open just enough where you can stick that sprayer in there, spray it up and down each one of these all the way through. You, you got to make sure you get every one of these bags. You, you can't miss one. Uh, it is important to look for mold. Uh, it should not be a problem if your refrigerator stays nice and cool. Uh, but it is important to check. So these require 60 days of stratification. It's going to take at least eight weeks of spraying once a week. Uh, you can pick a day, you can have, you can assign students on a schedule every Monday for eight weeks. Uh, even if this is over uh, the, the Christmas holiday break, if you spray before you leave and you just can't get back to the school, it should be fine as long as you hit them as soon as you come back the, the first day of pre-planting. But I would not skip it any more than that. But make sure these stay moist over those eight weeks or 60 days, however you schedule that with your students. Once you've got all your, your seeds in bags and in your containers and in the fridge, you've got your schedule all ready for the for the time that your seeds need to be stratified, this is done. If you want to keep on going, you want to extend this lab, the next step is to find local ecotype seeds. And that is hugely important. I am very excited that you took the step and purchased milkweeds or passion flowers or cone flowers. They're all great and I'm glad you have them, but you need ecotype seeds from your area to go along with that. Why? Because in the plant world, whether it's trees or grasses or sedges or even wildflowers, diversity is important. You need lots of different plants in there to cover the lots of different insect species. And then the other larger insects that feed on them or the small mammals uh, or the, the small reptiles and then everything up the food chain that goes along with it. The more the diversity you have, the greater amount of wildlife you're going to have. And the way you do that is to to get uh, seed heads from wildflowers in your area. But you say, well, why do I care? I just really want to get monarch butterflies for my milkweed. That's great. To tell you why it's important, uh, I read an article about a gentleman in the mid-Atlantic somewhere in the Delaware, Maryland area that cataloged 600 different species of butterflies and moths, the, the Lepidoptera order. Uh, and why that's important is every one of those moth or butterfly species or related species uh, is going to have something that feeds on it. And to give you one example, the, the chickadee, the songbird chickadee, uh, it, is, it has been documented it takes over 6,000 larvae to, to, to feed in a brood of young to adulthood. It takes a lot of energy to take these from a hatchling to a full grown adult. And we're not talking gigantic caterpillars. We're talking some very tiny uh, larva, um, but 6,000 is a lot. So you need a lot of different plants to go along with that. So it is important to get these. That, and the best place to get them is from around your school or around your town or somewhere in your county. In terms of strategies, to, to find them, to say, I don't know of any places in my area that have wildflowers. The best places to look are not in hay fields, mainly because they get cut for hay at least once a year, sometimes two or three times a year. When they cut it for hay, these wildflowers are gonna get mown down. The, the typical pasture grasses are designed to, for hay, to, to be hayed several times a year. 
Wildflowers are not. They have a very specific life cycle. So where do you have to look then? Well, you go on those margins. You go on the edges where they don't, where the sickle bar doesn't go, uh, in the corners, uh, especially uh, within that foot on any on side of fences. Um, Tree lines are okay. They're going to have a lot more shade. So fences are always better because there's not a lot of shadows there. The next best place is from what I call from the fence line to the fog line. You have the fence line. It, goes, it slopes down to your ditch and comes back onto the white line uh, of your road, of your local road, which is called the fog line. So from the fog line to the fence line, these areas don't get mowed as much. And also that, that, that magical one foot line from one foot to the fence there's going to be an area that very rarely gets mowed and that's where you're going to start to find these seed heads. These seed heads I found um, at a local restaurant we were eating at. It had a patio out back and there was a field out behind it uh, that had been neglected over the summer. Uh, and I had a feeling that it was going to be mowed so I went out with a, with a cup uh, and, and captured and grabbed several different uh, plant species. I don't even know what they are. I'm going to get the seeds I'm going to go through the stratification process and we'll see what comes up next year. But to tell you why it's important and just, and to, just to highlight the importance of all those Lepidopter species, I pulled one of the seed heads off and it had two chrysalis on it. I've never seen that before. I thought it was really cool. And I also know that this wildflower species is very important in my local area simply because there are insects that are feeding on this plant. So that's how you extend it. You take these and it's just like a, a threshing machine. You take this, we'll use a little, a little bigger one here. You take this, all I have to do is slam it on my desk right here and these seeds are gonna knock off these seed heads. So you have to be very careful about pruning these and keep these in a container because you can see there's, there's all kinds of seeds that have already fallen in the bottom of it. Um, you can get a cookie sheet, something that'll contain these seeds when they fly off. Just pick one, similar species of seed heads, whether you know it or not, knock them all out, collect all the seeds. If you have some dissecting microscopes, put some in a dish, look underneath and see which ones are the seeds and see which ones are the husks. Uh, separate out those seeds and then you can go through this process with unknown wildflower one or unknown wildflower two uh, and then plant these in the spring. Clearly, if you find some that there's insects that have clearly been feeding on them, you definitely need to get those because they're important to your area. But when you do that and you get these wildflower seeds planted, you're going you're gonna to be surprised how much nature is going to come to visit. Uh, the, the number of crickets and other insects that are going to be in there simply because of the cover that the, the wildflowers make. And then the smaller mammals and the lizards and the reptiles that are going to come in there and feed on that. And then the larger uh, birds, uh, birds of prey, uh, and predators, uh, that come in, the bigger the area you get, uh, the more diversity you're going to get, the more interest you're going to have in that area. So that it, it is, I am so excited that you ordered these seeds. Make sure you get these planted, uh, go find some native, uh, seeds to go along with it and get those in there. Uh, I mean, there, there are so many ways you can go with this. You can take this, if you want to extend it even further, if you get a kid that just goes all in on this, you can turn this into a science fair project. You can take some of these unknown seeds and you can split them. You can do the paper towel, wet paper towel method. You can try the seed bomb method. You can do the, the sand in the bag method. You can even not stratify some of them. You have four different ways you can go with this for an agri science fair project and then see what the germination rate is on top of it. If you need something for your greenhouse or you want to build a cold frame, you can take these seeds when they're done, especially the bigger ones that are easier to see, and you can put these in plug trays or just in some very small containers in potting soil and, um, and grow them from seed in, in your cold frame or in a, in a greenhouse, and then you can plant them before y'all leave school in the spring. And then that's another way you can make sure these germinate. And that can be part of the science fair project too. There are so many different ways you can go with this. You can extend this as far as you want it to go if you take the time and want to put some effort in to do that. I hope this was helpful. I hope you're as excited as I am about, about wildflowers. I, I never would have told you I was excited about wildflowers as a forester, but they're just so important to the diversity of, of the forest and to the landscape. I hope you're as excited as I am. If you get something out of this, please like our video, uh, please leave a comment or, or send us an email, tell us how it went, uh, give us some feedback uh, and have a great day.